this video tutorial, which is going to show you how to begin configuring your social ordering platform here. So after you've gone ahead and added a location and some uh, menu uh, and product lists, you'll be able to have a, a social ordering URL that you can begin directing customers to to place their orders. So you'll see when we click on that, this is my example uh, landing page here. So I'm going to begin to show you how to kind of customize this to your liking and, and uh, as well as some other kind of customization features um, that are going to be important when uh, people are placing orders with your business. So to get started, you'll want to click on the social ordering drop down and click on the configuration um, button underneath there. And so again, you'll see the URL here where you can always preview uh, your storefront. You can upload your own logo which I'll go ahead and do here. And I'll quickly just hit save so you can see uh, where that appears on your page here. So if we refresh this, you'll now see that my logo appears right here in the top left corner. Uh, if you don't have a logo there, as you've seen, it'll just uh, be blank and the uh, information for your business will appear underneath there. Uh, you can also upload an app icon. This is another square image. Um, basically all that this is is if you want to have a display via a tablet for example or you want to allow customers to save um, your storefront uh, app on your, their phone's home screen uh, they'll want a image associated with that app icon it's basically an app icon uh, but instead of downloading this from their uh, from their app store or Google Play or whatever you'll direct them to this social ordering URL and then you can ask them to just save that URL to their phone's home screen and it'll act as a, any other regular app would. It'll save the icon to their phone's home screen and they can click on it at any time to open up your uh, social ordering page. So I'm going to leave this uh, blank for now but you can upload just uh, another logo uh, image if you want to act as the icon. You can change the default category, so you can see I have two categories here, again assuming that uh, this is uh, using a restaurant as an example. So if you want the first place that people to land to be dinner, you can leave that checked off. Uh, dinner, desserts, if I had other um, pages under the uh, uh, categories rather, like desserts, entrees, etc., I could select those. Uh, right now I only have dinner, desserts, and lunch entrees, so you'll see if I switch to lunch entrees, and click Save. Currently, this page uh, defaults to dinner, dessert. And if we go ahead and open that in a new window, you'll see that it now defaults to my lunch entrees page. So you can really choose which page you want the first place for your customers to land to be. Uh, you can change your currency and your default country. If you're uh, located anywhere outside of the United States, this will be helpful to you. Um, you can change this to an online only storefront. So some businesses obviously have a brick and mortar. So if you're a brick and mortar business, you're obviously going to want to keep this unchecked. But if you're, for example, an online only business where you do all of your business uh, online, you can check this off and you'll see that uh, that takeout uh, option disappears and it's only delivery options here. You can change the label text for takeout and delivery. So I'm using a restaurant as an example. So takeout and delivery is pretty suitable uh, for these labels. Uh, but you can see right here, if we click through item details and uh, add an item that we have uh, takeout, delivery, or continue shopping uh, before the checkout screen. And so you can really change this to whatever fits your needs. So if you want to just do like pickup or uh, you know, shipping or whatever else, you can do that and have those uh, icons or buttons change to whatever fits your needs. So you can see those changed there. As we move forward, you can begin also to set up tracking inventory and uh, alerts to your business and staff who needs to know when inventory is getting low. So if you um, have this unchecked, it will just assume, the system will always assume that you have an unlimited quantity and you'll never be selling out of it. Um, some people use that if they're confident that they're going to be able to keep up with their orders or if they're able to kind of fulfill them uh, with some lag time and so forth. 
Otherwise, if you want to um, create a uh, uh, you know tracking uh, of your inventory here, you can check this box off, and you can check off whether you want to send an inventory alert email. So that's an email that goes to your business. Uh, members of your staff who need to be informed that inventory is getting low uh, from orders coming from your um, your platform here. So you can set what your alert level is. So I have, for example, the number one here. That means that this email will send when there's only one product left, when enough orders come in, that reduce it down to one. And the inventory alert email, you can just put email addresses in this field and uh, as many as you'd like separated by commas and that will send an alert email notifying you that uh, you're running low on that on any specific item that you may be running low on. So you might be asking, okay, well, how do I set um, those inventory levels? And that is uh, in your menu slash product list. So if I click over here, uh, you'll see I have an inventory tab here. If I have this enabled, I have 10 under each of these products here. If I click edit next to either of these, you'll see there's an inventory uh, field here that I can put in uh, when I'm getting it set up how many I have and every time for example we restock or your business restocks it you can come in here and add that additional inventory uh, so that uh, uh, you'll your customers will be able to order it when they're available and you will be notified whenever you're indeed running low on that uh, specific product so going back to this configuration page we've gone over all of these the labels the inventory stuff you can uh, you have some additional permissions here hide special instructions on the checkout page so if you check this box off for example um, there is a when you click whoops excuse me when you click pick up for example on this last checkout page there's a special in, uh, excuse me special instructions field here so if you check this box off it will remove that special instructions uh, field so that your customers won't be able to enter special instructions there you can hide special instructions for items so you can see if we back up let's say we go to dessert and i click on a specific item there's a special instructions thing here so this is helpful for example in the case of a restaurant maybe they have you know uh, uh, you know peanut allergy or something to that effect they can type that in here but if you want to remove this field you can check this box off and remove that field from each from this specific item. So again, from the checkout page and from each individual item. And you can also hide your address uh, from your website. So if you don't have a brick and mortar and you wanna uh, not uh, show your address or if you're kind of a mobile business or an online business, you can remove your address, which appears again in this left uh, upper left corner here. You can remove that from this information here and last couple of pieces here, design. Uh, you can change and really customize the colors here. So you can change the button background color from black to like a, a blue, uh, the font color, the header color, link color, etc. So, you know, I'll just change a couple of these to show you um, and click save here. And so now when we refresh, you'll see that our header color and these header colors here, this text changes, and our button color changed because those are the two that I changed. So you can really customize that to your liking. Or uh, if you are uh, pretty uh, handy with um, CSS uh, development, you can put in your own CSS code in here and click save and it'll update that accordingly. Last piece is your return policy. Uh, you can choose to have this or not. So you can see I've left this blank for now. Uh, but if I go ahead through the sales, through this process of ordering something and I'm ready to go pick up or ship or what have you, uh, special, excuse me, the uh, return policy would go here. So I can click uh, enter that return policy here if you want to make that clear to your customers. And when we refresh it, you'll see that that return policy goes at the bottom of the checkout page. And so now your customer can come in here and sh uh, check off between pickup or shipping or takeout or delivery, whatever you have your um, settings. You can see when we check between them, when I do shipping, uh, the delivery option that I have to, the customer now has to enter their address information and so forth. And uh, so that's about it. That's everything on the configuration side. There are video tutorials for each of these other 
uh, menu items here as you go through and get your uh, social ordering tool set up here. So definitely reference though for those for any other questions that you may have, but I, have, I hope that this video was helpful for the purposes of configuring your social ordering account here. Thanks.